During this first segment, we're going to work with applique, quilting, and sometimes piecing this whole table topper with almost the entire thing with the embroidery machine. It, it's a reversed technique, it really mm -hmm. is. Normally, you um, applique, then piece, and mm -hmm. then quilt. In this instance, we're going to quilt first, then applique, and then piece. Now, this applique is not your traditional run-of-the-mill applique. No, it's raw edge applique. So all of these are raw edges, but because we'll be using a special fusible web, it's not going to ravel, right. and it's closely stitched, and we're going to put everything in hoops. Now, again, you have to have an embroidery machine, but there are three different sizes of embroideries that you can work with. We have a six-inch block a seven inch block, and an eight inch block. So you can choose whatever you'd like, and it kind of depends upon what size hoops that you have with your embroidery machine. So this is a six by 10, which many embroidery machines come with. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you're not gonna fill a six by 10, but that's your six inch block, and that would be the size hoop that you would use. Or maybe you have a six by six hoop. Of course, that would, that would be appropriate also. And then the larger blocks would call for a bigger hoop like a seven by 12 or an eight sure. by eight. So not those small ones, but the, the, the average size mm -hmm. blocks. Mm -hmm. Now there, you're gonna sew all three layers at one time or embroider all three layers at one time. And we're gonna give you a sneak peek of what's going to come. But we have a backing fabric, a batting like a quilt would have, and then mm -hmm. the top fabric. And then the applique, and this is what it's going to look like. We're not gonna give you all the, the steps right now, but after some trimming, then da da, it ends up like this. I call this a very rewarding technique. When you take it out of the hoop and it looks like this, mm, you know, you might not <laughs> be too excited about it, but after the trimming, that's when the beauty really appears. We're going to talk about thread color and so forth when we're stitching this, but you know, working with a solid color on the front is a good thing, mm -hmm. and working with a print fabric on the back is also wise. And I like your little saying that you have about fabrics. Well, print fabrics conceal and solids reveal. So on the back of any embroidery design, you're gonna have some tie-offs, that's just inevitable. And if you want to hide them, then use a busy print on the back and it'll camouflage those tie-offs. And on the front, you'll reveal the stitching because mm -hmm. it's a solid. Right. And now, the, as an embroiderer, mm -hmm. we use um, contrasting threads. And I love to use black to outline my appliques, but many uh, traditional quilters would maybe go with a tone on tone. And then for the applique fabric, solids work well or something that has a little texture to it, not texture, a visual texture, mm -hmm. what you see here. So that's easy to work with. Now we need to cut the fabric crosswise strips, right. but you know, in quilting sometimes you cut, cut two and a half crosswise strips or three inch crosswise strips. Well, this is, these crosswise strips are going to be larger than the hoop. Right, and so you will cut your fabric, the width of the fabric, and then measure your hoop width. And you want to make sure you, that your quilt sandwich is about two inches wider. So and we have all these three layers, mm -hmm. back, top, and front, and you want to just hoop that sure. quickly? Sure. And it, there's no right or wrong, just right side up, Insert that inner ring and finger press down and you are hooped. Best to do this on a nice flat surface. We'll do the next one in a flat magnetic hoop. And I'll just put this underneath for now. Mm -hmm. And then you could also use a magnetic hoop that uh, we'll be using interchangeably the standard hoop and the magnetic. So whatever you have at home, that's what you can use. Sure, so that's a flat metal bottom. We just place our quilt sandwich on top. I position the top right there and that snaps into place and I can fine tune my fabric placement because mm -hmm. it's flat. Sure, and the magnet is not going to harm your sewing machine. No, absolutely not. At all. not. Mm -hmm. So we have the fabric prepared. We've decided what we're going to be using for the applique and then it's time to do the stitching. We're quilting with an embroidery machine, so obviously I have, and Eileen has, the quilting, uh, the embroidery unit attached to the machine. And we have the hoops, respective hoops, attached into the embroidery unit, and as far as needles go, we're quilting, so we put in a quilting needle and embroidery thread, both in the bobbin and the needle thread itself. 
So we're going to go be stitching through all three layers. Now, Eileen, you've transferred the design into your machine and you will be ready to sew in just a few minutes. That's right. And on the screen, you can see that the embroidery design is there and it tells us there are four colors. Although we're going to stitch every color in black, the machine will still stop after each one so that we can add our applique fabrics. So it's simple as lower the presser foot and press go and it starts to stitch. So a lot of quilting with an embroidery machine is the preparation because right now we just watch. We do <laughs> just Meyer. watch. But in nine minutes, you're going to have a completely finished block, both applique mm -hmm. and quilted. It's pretty fast. So as we mentioned earlier, it goes the stitching that's going that we're going to show you goes through all three layers. But there may be times that you don't want to go through all layers. Yes, yeah, sometimes you want the back of the quilt block or table topper to be clean. And so then you would just hoop the top fabric and batting. So this is a sample we're going to be working with in just a, in a little bit later in the program to show you how to piece the units together. I'm not going to show you that just yet. But here you can see that instead of using two, three layers of fabric, we've just used two, the top and the back batting. And the backing will be applied later so that it's clean in the back. So you can use just two layers of fabric, but using that solid color on the back, or not solid, print color on the back is really quite convenient. It is, either way is fine, whatever your preference is. So as this is stitching, you'll notice I am using the black thread and that's contrasting with my base gray fabric. These color choices have been selected to really let the stitches in the embroidery pop, to let them be the hero. And this is just a running stitch. Yes, so we don't need any stabilizer like we normally would in embroidery. In fact, like the garment I'm wearing, most certainly is traditional embroidery and it has stabilizer in it. But when you're quilting with your embroidery machine, you just need batting. So you gotta think differently than what we normally do. And we're just going to let this stitch as it finishes the stippling, and then it's going to do an echo stitch. So we'll come back as it's completing this first go around. It's just about finished, this echo quilting. And this echo quilting is a bean stitch. So that means the needle penetrates at point A, goes on to B, back to A, on to uh, B, and then continues on. So that's an echo and a really nice outline. It gets so, very heavy. It's a heavy stitch because it it's three stitches in one area. Right. And so now I'm ready to add my first layer of applique fabric. And I have prepared it with a fusible web on the wrong side. So I'll just go ahead and remove that protective paper. And then I just place this down. I want to make sure that my applique piece is bigger than my outline. That's all I have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Finger press it in place and press start. Now it's going to travel around the embroidery applique area and it'll tack it down. Again, this is another um, bean stitch, so it gives it a nice strong hold. It's like the, a triple straight stitch on your sewing machine. It goes back and forth, back and forth, and, and it uh, gets that heavy stitch. So normally, if you're appliqueing at this point, you would have cut out a shape and then zigzag it on. Well, in this instance, we're working with the flat fabric and then trimming to size after the stitching, which is quite clever, Eileen. Well, it really is quite a time saver. And uh, we'll just jump back to that fusible web that we talked about. The kind that we're using is, is not tacky because if we used a tacky, sure. you can't trim later on. So make sure you get one that's just as a smooth finish and uh, you'll have better results. And we're not going to press until <laughs> much later because, because uh, that yeah. would be your block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd end up with a, right. quite a bit different, mm -hmm. different shape. Now, color, with color with the appliques. So I like to select fabrics that contrast in value. So if I have a dark gray, my first applique color is going to be light, as in this real light green. And then my next one will be the reverse. It'll be a dark value. And I just go light, dark, light, dark, or, you know, dark, light, dark, light. So that one is complete. And believe it or not, I just leave it as is, all that excess fabric hanging off, and I'll remove the protective paper from the fusible web on the next applique, layer that into position, just finger smooth it, and press go. Now we'll have some decorative elements that are added to the interior of the flower. 
and um, we'll let this stitch a little bit and then we'll come sure. back and put our last piece on, I think. So it's just kind of fun to watch it do, do the work while we enjoy the results. So we'll let this stitch and come back when the applique is almost completed. Well, now you have the second applique already stitched and you can see it's getting character. And then the final applique for this design is just the circle. The flower center, yeah, but so But you, you put down a rectangle to <laughs> stitch a circle. So in nine minutes, you have a completed block and it's already quilted. Yeah, it's quilted, it's mm -hmm. applique, but it doesn't look too attractive just yet. You're going to be stitching to make this table topper four of the design that Eileen has. And you can use different color combinations as we have in this example. And then there's another option that it's included in the book that accompanies today's program, this embroidered design with curved edges that you could create four of those. Now you have a long crosswise strip mm -hmm. and you can advance the fabric. I, why don't you show that again? Because that's pretty okay. cool. So I just finished the block and I lift that magnetic top frame uh -huh. and slide it up over the head of the machine <laughs> and store it off to the side so that I can manipulate and advance my fabric. Now, what I want to make sure is I want to leave at least an inch and a uh -huh. half between the bottom of the first block and the top of the second block. So I'll pull that fabric up till I can feel that metal frame underneath. And then I just lift this back in position make sure it's aligned at the edges. I can fine tune my fabric and lower the presser foot and I'm ready to start my next block. I need to make four of that sure. design. And if you had a standard hoop as I have here, then you would just remove the hoop from the machine and reposition it again, leaving yourself at least an inch and a half from the space uh, from the first stitching. If you leave more, which I made this sample, I left a little bit too much, you can use that extra fabric for sashing, so not to worry. Now, it doesn't look too attractive right now, Eileen. <laughs> and not at all. And in fact, when I make these types of projects, I'm often, you know, worried that I made the wrong decision with fabrics, with um, thread selection, uh -huh. until you finish trimming just what you're doing now, and the big reveal occurs, and I find that to be very rewarding. It, this is good TV time um, trimming, you know, you're listening to the news. Yep. And you have it in your lap and you just finish trimming. And, and, these, and these scraps, Nancy, if I, I can interrupt, oh, sure. I like to keep these scraps in a baggie because they have the fusible web on them. Oh, sure. And they're great for other small applique projects or any kind of confetti work that you might do. The fusible is already on the back. And when you'll be trimming, you will not be trimming to a camera, you'll be trimming so you can look at it a little bit. So I, you can hold up the fabric, you can bevel the scissors, which I'm doing right now, holding it parallel with the fabric so that you can have the trimming. And then after you've done all the trimming, we'll just advance to this finished flower, you do the pressing. Press so that those edges fuse down and you're not going to have raveling. Beautiful for a table topper, for a pillow, for a small quilt or a large quilt. Regardless of the size, all the sewing and embroidery is done in the same way. At the top of the show, Eileen cut crosswise strips of fabric, top fabric, batting, and backing fabric, just a little bit wider than the hoop. And you, you'll be able to embroider and applique and stipple Approximately, not approximately, you'll be able to stitch four different blocks on that crosswise strip, strip. Then it's time to cut them apart, allowing a half of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Now, Eileen, usually we have a fourth of an inch seam allowances in quilting, but not now. A half inch seam allowance is much more forgiving, and it gives you a wider sashing. And here you can see that I have the ruler aligned to the outer stitching and just cut with a half of an inch, trimming so that that half of an inch, regardless if you have a six or seven or eight inch square, they're all going to have half inch seam allowances. And now you're ready to do the stitching, to piece them together, which is usually the last step. Right, and this is the reversible piecing technique. So um, my quilt block is trimmed to a half inch seam allowance. I take my front sashing or top sashing and place that right sides together with the front of my block. 
I then take the back sashing and place that right sides together with the back of the block. And it's really important that they're two inches. Yes, two inches because we're using a half inch seam allowance. And I have my half inch seam allowance gauge attached to the machine and I'm just gonna start stitching. And I'm stitching through all layers, the sashing in the front, and sashing in the back, and the quilt sandwich itself. You just wanna make sure that you have all the edges aligned and then go ahead and stitch right down the seam. It's gonna be amazing, but those seams will kiss together. They'll just meet, so with that half inch seam and the two inch sashing strip. And then go to the ironing board and press the seam and then press open only the front sashing. So you'll see that it's just the front sashing and on the back, my back sashing is still behind the first block. And then we take block B or block number two and we add that to the front sashing only, aligning the raw edges. We also wanna make sure that the edges of the block are aligned because we're making a long row. Mm -hmm. And then half inch seam allowance again. And this time I'm stitching through the quilt block and the front sashing only. And this is fast, and we're gonna do this to connect every block into a long row. Mm -hmm. Sew and press and sew, sew again. and press, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't take too long. And I like to press from the front first and then flip it over, and then you'll see that your seam allowances meet right in the middle. And then I take the iron and press over the back sashing and now I'll flip this around a little bit and I fold under a scant half inch because the idea is to catch that fold in the stitch in the ditch stitching, stitching on the front of the block. So I'll use a couple pins right here to pin it in place and then I'll flip it over and repin and then remove these so that I don't actually stitch on the pins. And this pinning just takes a little bit of time. Now, you'll notice the color of our front sashing matches the quilt block. You don't have to do that. You most certainly can add color mm -hmm. and then it becomes a different design element of the quilt itself. But when you use the very same, you find that it, the quilt appears to be a whole cloth quilt. And you know, it's pretty impressive. People yeah, that, think that's that pretty neat. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to move my needle over. Now, when you stitch in the ditch, you don't use black thread. You would use matching <laughs> thread. Right, but. but for our instance here on TV, it's just fine. And this is going to capture all the layers. And you would take your time and fold that properly. And there it's re you'll have a reversible. It will be finished on both sides. Right. So let's take a look. Pretty good. <laughs> I caught, you know, I caught most of it, so I could do a better job if I didn't have my seam, seam gauge in place and all of this would be tacked down. Now, I often add a decorative stitch down the middle, like a pretty serpentine stitch on some of my samples, just to add a little bit more um, flair to the project itself. On this stipple design, down the sashing, you can see the serpentine stitch, which adds some needed stitching and interest. Now remember, if you did not want to stitch through all three layers of fabric, just rather just doing the batting and the top, as in this sample, after only adding the sashing to the front, then you could cover the backing and stitch in the ditch to complete your quilt.